I have not filmed a ranking video in a hot minute, and this is gonna be me ranking a bunch of the things that I have picked up through 2024 that I have not reviewed for you so far. This is just a big pile of things that I have been trying out in many different ways just to get back and review them for you. So let's see what has been the worst and the best releases of 2024 so far. So I'm gonna start at the bottom with the things that I like the least, and per usual, I'm gonna try my very best to explain to you why I don't like something and also why I do like something, because we're all different, we all have different preferences, we all have different expectations of makeup. I am 40 years old, I love dramatic makeup, and I live in a humid climate and I have combo oily skin. That of course plays into whether or not I'm gonna like a product, especially when it comes to complexion products, but also when it comes to color cosmetics, because Clearly I'm a happy clown. I actually did not end up filming this look and the main reason is that I've been using tretinoin for several days in a row and my skin is actually acting up a little bit. It's looking kind of scaly, flaky, horrible, so we're not zooming in today. You don't get to see the lizard skin that's going on, but I did actually use this one, the Glaminatrix Pretty in Pastels. Ooh, I'm not gonna be reviewing this one today because I've only used it twice and I will say today's look it was a little bit of a struggle, so I need to use this at least one more time to see how I really feel about this one. Okay, the bottom position is gonna be super easy because this is something that I really detest and it did not work out on my skin whatsoever, and that is the new BB Burst from Kosas. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. This simultaneously looks oily and dry at the same time on my skin. My skin like just gets greasy and oily, but when I really go in and look at my skin, it almost looks scaly. There's something, it's like almost like artificial moisture. Like it says it's gonna moisture my skin and it feels oily on the skin, but it doesn't moisturize my skin whatsoever. And it just ends up looking scaly, which is weird because I do not have dry skin. And like I told you, yes, I am like, flaking and my skin is acting up, but I have been using this for quite a bit. I just really, really don't like it. I thought this was gonna be a tinted moisturizer, but I just think that this looks super artificial on my skin. I don't like it at all on my skin. If you have oily skin, definitely don't recommend this one. It is very greasy, honestly, and I just don't like how it wears. It just doesn't look flattering whatsoever on my skin, and I don't really have any kind of problem skin. And this just made my skin look it would have looked better without foundation. And then what's the point? What's the point? So I really, 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 really do not like this one. I'm sorry, Kosas, this was not for me whatsoever. The next thing that I actually really don't like, and I feel sad because I love Lethal Cosmetics so much, but this mascara, they released a mascara. This isn't for me. This one is in the colored one. They also came up with it in other colors. I didn't put them in here. I just put the blue one in here. This does not give me enough oomph. You can definitely layer this one with other mascaras, but you need a million layers for this one to look somewhat appealing on the lashes. And I have so many mascaras that I like that even just with one layer, I like them better than this one with three layers. I've been trying to really like this one. They asked me what colors I wanted. I asked for the black and I asked for the blue. I love so many things from the brand. This just is not one of them, but I am looking for a mascara in this color. So many people are using and loving the YSL one. Is it worth the hype? Should I pick it up? There is a Sephora sale around the corner and I could see myself of getting something like that. So let me know if you actually think that that one is like good, if any of you have tried it out, because I don't need the blue mascara to be like the most wowing ever, but that one just felt like blue water on my lashes. The next thing that I really don't like, and this has nothing to do with how the mascara performs, but this is the Glam Light and Betty Booth mascara. And this is a actually a pretty decent mascara, but I have realized I hate uh, tubing mascaras. And this is a tubing mascara. I actually really like the component. It's like a soft touch one. This one is actually really nice to hold. I like the brush a lot. I like this formula. If you like a tubing mascara, you might really like this one. I've just realized I really don't uh, because I like to wash my face with cold water. And since I don't like washing my face with warm water, that's going to make this one dissolve and like, you know, fall off in little 
squiggly worms off your lashes it just turns into a hassle and it turns into me having to change around my like skincare routine and my cleansing routine for a mascara when I could just as well use another mascara. I never have problem with mascaras transferring to my lower lashes. I never have problems with smudging and stuff like that. If I had that problem, I might be seeing this in a different lens, but since I don't, this is just adding a stress element at me at the end of the day trying to get this one off because I realized I really 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 like washing my face with cold water is that normal I don't know maybe it's the Sweden <laughs> the next thing that I actually really don't like and I think I like the idea of this one I just don't like it on its own and that is the Pacifica sunny glow this is the bronzing drops it's got vitamin c and caca du plum and I don't necessarily, I shouldn't say I really don't like, but this one, you use this on your face and it gives like a, a bronzing effect to your skin. The thing with this is, I think it dries down too quickly so that it makes it really hard to use this product on its own on your skin. It doesn't feel like a nice serum that you can just blend into your face. Like you can't just put a couple of drops on your face, blend it in and get an even layer. It dries as you're blending it out. So it ends up being a little patchy. So for me, this one only works if I use it mixed with something that is easier to blend in. So for me, I can't use this one on its own because it becomes patchy, but I do like the idea of this because I usually am not as tan in my face as I am on my body. I always have to use a foundation that's like one shade darker than my face to get everything to like, like to go with like my face, my chest, my, my hands and all of that. So I like the idea of being able to use something like this when you don't want to wear makeup to just even out your skin tone. I mean, I can mix it with moisturizer, sure, but I want a product that's like a multi-use product that I can use in several different ways. So this, I usually, okay. I do have a little mini bias towards indie brands because I love indie brands so much. So sometimes I'm like, oh, that must have been really hard for an indie brand to do. Or it's, sometimes it's really hard to come up with several shades or really fancy packaging or keep the prices down or anything like that. But I will say I don't really like this product for what it is supposed to do. And that is the Fantasy Cosmetica Highlighter Trio. This one is called Celestial Lights. I love the packaging. I love the format of this one. And then there is three different shades in here. For me, none of these are highlighters. These for me are topper eyeshadows. They are too strong. They are too much of a colored base and for me i feel like i am putting an eyeshadow on my cheeks so i think that this would have been better in an eyeshadow palette than as a highlighter palette again that is just my opinion how i feel about these they're not bad quality i just don't think they're highlighters i will not use these as highlighters i didn't like them on my skin as highlighters others might feel different i just I don't think that this was like a slam dunk for the brand. I will be talking about the Wizard eyeshadow palette though, and that's way up in the ranking because that one I really, really did like. This one is, this is a fragrance and I want to mention this one. Actually, let me go and get, let me go and get the one that I thought that this was going to be. Hold. First of all, this is the new fragrance from Killian that is called Born to be Unforgettable. And this was marketed as a Coca-Cola note fragrance. And one of my absolute favorite fragrances in the world is the A Lab on Fire Paris LA. And it looks like this. It's like a bottle. And uh, this is top three, my favorite fragrances, most used fragrances. When I do this, I can tell that it's less than half left and it is very expensive. And I mean, it is as expensive as Killian, but it's also very hard to get a hold of. And I was thinking this also has Coca-Cola as a note. And this smells like a fizzy, citrusy, fresh, spicy Coca-Cola in a fragrance way. And it has an amazing sillage and it just lasts forever. And every time I wear this, there's always someone saying, mm, you smell good or what is that? And it is just absolutely amazing. And I've heard so many things about Killian and their uh, Coca-Cola fragrance or cola fragrance, sorry, fizzy cola fragrance that they discontinued. And now they were coming back with the fragrance. And I was thinking this, it's gonna be this, just easier to get a hold on. This 
isn't that. This one is way too heavy, cologne old timer cologne. It smells a little almost damp cellar. There's, it's too much. It's too heavy. I don't know if it's oud. I don't know if it's cedar. I don't know if it's woods all over. Something about this, it's lost the freshness. This is a fizzy citrusy coke as you pour it like over ice from the bottle, a freshly opened one. And it just, in a fragrance way, this is stale coke that's been sitting without the cap on in the back of the closet since 1992. I just think that this doesn't smell fresh at all and I don't like it. I don't like it. It's one of those fragrances that I can see if someone really likes heavy fragrances, why they would like it. I'm just disappointed because I was hoping for something else. This was a really long and winded way of me talking about a fragrance that let me down, but it only tells me that I need to go and buy a backup. Oh, this one is so good. This one is so good. I say it's like, oh, it's amazing. It's just, I bought it in a store in Sweden. I don't even know where to buy this. The next thing I'm going to talk about is something that it doesn't work for me, but I think that this one is way better formulated than this one. And this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Hydro Glow. This one I think is better because it doesn't break up and it doesn't look crusty and dry and weird on the skin. It looks extremely glowy, extremely glowy on my skin. This is way too glowy for my oily combo skin. I look wet. I look wet with this one on and it, the longevity is like I need to babysit it. But at least I can babysit it. At least I can blot and powder this one and make it last throughout the day. I do need to look into it and like give it a little helping hand every now and then. That closest one, it's one of those that like a couple of hours have passed, do not get close to me. There is a three meter radius around me, do not get close to me, nobody gets a look at my skin. This one still looks good, it's just way too glowy for someone that is combo oily. So if you're looking for a hydrating foundation, if you're looking for something that actually looks dewy but still kind of hangs in there, do think this is well formulated, it's just not the right one for me. This one there's really nothing wrong with it and a lot of people really like this one, but we're getting into a lot of really good makeup and I will say with this one, I kind of wish this is the yummy, yummy, clean, fresh, yummy gloss from CoverGirl. I just wish that this one had more color and there are so so many shades of this and everyone I see wearing this one they all look like clear gloss on the lips and I don't get why you have like so many shades when they're all kind of the same shade. I'm gonna group a couple of these things together because there's a lot of makeup that we need to go through. This is the blush and bronzer collection by Arian Beauty. This is a matte blush. It's nice. I, it's really hard to be for me to be impressed by a matte blush and this didn't, it's not bad, but it didn't like impress me. This blush, the first time, like it's not a blush, this bronzer, the first time I used this bronzer, I was like, oh, it's a little hard to blend and it's not the right color. And I was like, I'm gonna use it with another foundation. I used it with several different foundations. I just don't like the color on me and it's not super easy to blend. I got it in out of office. It is just leaning a little red on me. It's not my favorite. And I just, I have so many bronzers that I prefer over this one. So for me, this launch just ended up being a little meh. And I'm gonna put this one here and it's not because I think this is bad. This is a million percent only because this isn't perfect for me. I'm actually wearing this one today. This is a green highlight and I don't really wear colored highlighters that are like green or blue or purple on my skin. Pink and peach I can do, but I, I like going really wild with my eyeshadow, but when it comes to my cheeks, apparently I'm all of a sudden I'm, I'm very vanilla. These blushes are extremely pigmented to the point that even if I just dot and put it on my cheeks, it is already too much. This is not meant for fair, light, light, medium skin tones. I'm just saying that right now. If you have that, just know that these are extremely pigmented and there are other blushes that will fit you better. If you are wanting a blush like this and you're looking for something really pigmented and you have a medium tan, dark, deep skin tone, I think you would really like this. This I'm only putting down, like this packaging is amazing. I'm just putting this here because for me, this is just a little hard to use because of how extremely pigmented it is. 
With that being said, I realized that it's probably meant for other skin tones than mine. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for something that is red and orange with a fun highlighter that is very pigmented, this could be for you. A while ago, I did a video trying out a flower nose for the first time. And I'm gonna put all the things here and I'm gonna put that video down below in case you wanna see me trying out. I have some lip products. I have this cream bronzer that literally did not show up on my skin tone. So rude. I, nothing, there was nothing on this, nothing. It didn't show up, which I mean, it's light, but also it didn't build at all. This highlighter was really good quality though. This blue one, it's really nice. And this eyeshadow palette was decent. The quality was nice. There's nothing bad with the quality, but I haven't used any of these products again. Like I have used them and reached for them, but I have been, able, okay, I need to reformulate this. I had to force myself to use these products again. A lot of these products that you're gonna see towards the end, products that I really use, I have like woken up being like, oh, what makeup I'm gonna use today? And I've thought about that blush. I've thought about that bronzer. I've thought about that highlighter. Some things I have to say like, no, you cannot use that one again. You need to go and look through your pile and see what other things you're reviewing. And there it's been in my pile, flower nose. And I've been like, oh, I need to use that again. So none of these things have really inspired me enough to be like, oh, I wanna use that one again. Maybe I tried the wrong things. I will keep trying out the brand, of course. Just so far, it's been it's been good, but also a little forgettable for me. Okay, now we're gonna go into some things that there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my favorite. And I kind of thought that maybe it would be, but it's not. First is gonna be those lip maracuja juicy plumps, the ones that are glittery. I have the glittery one in coral shimmer glass. It's like the super glittery one. And these went super viral. And this one is in Rose Mauve. It's also the shimmer glass. These are a little bit like those tart ones. Like you click and it comes out of the tube and it is that like gloss in a stick, but it's not as goopy as the original, but it is very glittery. And I thought I was gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be like that shimmer that makes it look a little wet. No, it just looks very glittery. And I don't like glittery lips. I know some people are die hard, like shimmer glosses and sparkle glosses and glittery lips. And if you're that, this might be for you. I was thinking it was just gonna be one of those that made your lips look very wet and like the shine was just gonna, no, it looks glittery. Not my favorite, I should have known, but sometimes like I take one for the team just to see what kind it is. And it just, it wasn't my favorite. I really did like this one, but I'm gonna put it here because it is a matte blush duo. This is the Betty Boop and Glam Light blush duo. It is two blushes. I like that they went a little bit different with this one than the other ones that they have done. Cause this one is more of a, like a pink blush, like a pink red, it's different from the other blushes. Some that they have had has been that like bright cool tone pink in def different things. This is like a warmer pink, a warmer muted pink and a warmer brighter pink. I like that there are more of a difference between these two, but at the end of the day, there are two matte blushes and I don't love matte blushes, but I will say at a fairly affordable price, you do get two. You see the hearts are going in and out. You do get two and they're both good quality and the packaging is really nice. It's just really hard for me to be so excited about matte blushes, even though they're good quality. The eyeshadow palette though, that one I ranked in a recent ranking. If you're, it's not gonna be as many eyeshadow palettes in this one as it was, but I had a recent ranking a bunch of eyeshadow palettes. I will link that down below actually, so that you can see the corresponding eyeshadow palette because I love that one. Here's another one. Oh my God, this matches me so well. But here's another one in the category of stuff that's like, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not something that I reach for a lot. Smashbox sent me these uh, face palettes and I ended up using this one. This one is in Coral Saturation, which I think is their second to lightest or is this one? I don't remember. This bronzer is more of a sculpt it's very neutral leaning cool tone on me and that is the main reason why i haven't been using this a lot and i think that that's the main reason why face palettes usually just don't work out for me i don't like when choices are made for me because i usually just do not agree this one is prosecco pop which is a beautiful highlighter that is perfect if you have i want to say like a light medium all the way up to probably tan because it has a transparent base and it's a little bit of a warmer 
not super icy glow on the cheeks. It is a beautiful one on me. There are two blushes here. Both of the blushes are matte, but there's like a warmer pink and then there isn't like an orangey peach. And I think the blushes are really nice and together with the highlighter, I can make them glowy. This is just not the right color for me. Again, another one of those products that I had to force myself to use to review because the bronzer isn't my favorite. It's not even a bronzer on me. It says contour powder, so that could be it. But also like I don't need contour, I want a bronzer. So I tried. It's okay, but not my favorite. This is the Fenty Beauty. What is this actually called? We're even hydrating concealer. I'm actually wearing this in my under eyes today. And this is one of the reasons why I don't love this one. If my under eyes are acting up and they're dry and like just not, the tretinoin has been tretinoying, this one will not help anyone. I do have concealers that will make the situation look better. This is not that. This one, since it says hydrating and it is a hydrating concealer, it also, if you have a lot of fine lines in your under eyes, like I do, again, I'm 40, this one ha is very crease prone. You have to set this with a lot of powder for it not crease. And if you're like, oh, I'm looking for a little extra coverage, I'm just gonna use an extra dot. There is no helping the creasing if you end up using just a little bit more. If you like a creamy concealer, if you like Natasha Nona concealer, you probably will like this one too. I dislike this one for the exact same reason. It's very crease prone. And when I do have like textured under eyes and you think that a hydrating concealer would help, this one is actually one of my least favorite options. This is the Glamlight Calligraphy Eyeliner. I'm wearing this one today. This is actually a really nice eyeliner. It is saturated all the way to the tip but it is a felt tip liner and felt tip, they're always gonna have less longevity than a brush tip. They're always gonna end up fraying before the product ends up being done. So I just, I will never prefer felt tip over a brush tip. With that being said, it's a nice eyeliner. It is super black. It is very saturated. It is easy to work with. If this ends up being a felt tip that doesn't fray and it's like amazing all the way to the end, I will let you know but this is just a personal preference that I will always prefer a brush tip. I actually got, and I am as surprised as you are, I got a PR package from ABH, and one of the things they sent me was this Glow Seeker highlighter. This one is in Sun Idol, and it is very interesting that it does say a name on the back, because the highlighter only came out in one color, which is this color. I think that this one looks really good on the cheeks, but this one is a somewhat like a baked formula, and it is a little bit more dry to the formula. It is nice, it is looking really nice on the skin, but it is not as nice as, I really like that Makeup by Mario highlighter, super smooth and silky, and I really like the Too Faced highlighter that I bought, super smooth and silky. This one is a little bit more of that baked, a little bit more harder pressed formula that you kinda need to go in and get on your cheeks. It's not bad, I just have other ones that I prefer. If you tried that, what was it called? The Ice Highlighter or Iced Out, Iced Over, Freeze Highlighter. Do you remember that one? This one has a similar formula to that one. I have not been, and you know this from before, I have not been the biggest fan of the Tower 28 blushes because I feel like they have been like a little too sheer to be a blush that I like. And when I like pack them on a little bit to get the color, they never dry down and they end up making my cheeks sticky. This one that is more pigmented, this is the Beach Please Blush in Dumpling Hour. This one is more pigmented, so I can just dip it in and put it on my cheeks, and I don't have to pack it on for it to show up on my cheeks, and it doesn't then end up being super sticky on my cheeks. So it just shows me that I like this formula more when it's more pigmented because I have to use less product. Otherwise, I think it's a little sticky. This is still not my favorite blush formula, but at least it showed me that if I'm gonna get more Tower 28 blushes, if they release more, if I wanna try more, I should stick to the ones that have a little bit more pigment to them. Speaking of that, this is the Lip and Cheek Balm from ColourPop. This one is in Adore You. I actually wore this again yesterday just to like make sure that I like this one the way that I actually do like this one. I think these are really pretty quality. This is a balm that looks dewy on your cheeks without being sticky, and they are way, way more pigmented than those cream blushes they released last year. I did not like that formula at all. It was dry, 
it dried down too quickly and it had no pigment to it. This one has pigment to it and it looks dewy on the cheeks without being sticky. It, the only problem is that they only came up with three colors for Valentine's in this heart-shaped little compact and it's a pink pink and a pink and that's not my favorite. So if they were to come out with more with this formula, I can be on board because I do like this formula way more than I like both the stick blushes and the other dry weird cream blushes they came out with last year. What was that? This is a really nice formula. I'm putting this here because it's good, but it's not great to the point where I'm like, everybody needs to go get this. It's nice. This is the Satin Lipstick Formula by Makeup by Mario. Uh, oh, it's kind of similar to what I'm wearing today. I'm actually wearing a new, um, like a colored lip balm from We Makeup. This one is in O2. It's an O2. That's what it's called. It's really pretty. And this one is an Uptown Girl. Yeah, Uptown Girl. And it's kind of similar. It's like a like a warmer burnt coral. I keep saying burnt coral, coral like that's a thing. We're making it a thing. Burnt coral trademarked. <laughs> but I think this is a really pretty color and I like the formula. Is this the best satin lipstick formula I've ever tried? No, I'm actually gonna talk about a satin lipstick formula that I'm gonna rank higher than this, basically because it's somewhat of the same effect on the lips, just cheaper. Sometimes I can say like, oh yeah, this one, it costs more and it's worth more. This one, it isn't bad. If you buy it, you're not gonna be disappointed with it, but it's not like it's undupable by any <laughs> stretch of the imagination. Here we have the Unearthly Cosmetics Charmer Palette. This was part of the mystery box for Valentine's Day. And this one is a very, very colorful palette. And I like what I've done with this palette. I've used this in two different um, YouTube videos. And I think that this is great quality. I just don't love the color scheme. I'm gonna be totally honest with you. I think that these don't fit in at all. Like these shimmers are, they're different, but they're not different enough. I don't know if I think that any of these really fit in or if maybe those, go, I don't, it's not my favorite color scheme from Unearthly Cosmetics and I usually love the color schemes that the owner comes up with. This isn't bad, I just, and again, not everybody thinks creatively the same way and just because a color story I say that like I don't know what to do with it, it doesn't mean that people feel the same that I do. I'm just saying that the quality is nice, it's just not my favorite palette from them. This is only a color preference because I actually really like this formula, but this color that I got is the wrong one. This is the LYS, I don't know what these are called. It's the shimmery, um, shimmery cream blushes. I got it in focused and it's, I think it's called a warm cinnamon or something like that, or a toasted cinnamon or a burnt, I don't know, something cinnamon. It's almost looks like a bruise on my cheeks. I don't love this color on me. It was not the perfect color for me. And I would like to be able to get a better color for me. One would think that this would be a good color, but there was something about this reddish brown. It was either too dark or too red to be good on me. It looked a little bit like a rash or a, like a bruise. So I like the formula, this color just wasn't uh, perfect for me. So I'm gonna see if I can get this in another color. One of the things that I really did not like about this launch is that the product pictures on Sephora look nothing like they look in real life. And that's why I didn't buy one when I was there in real life, because I was so confused. I'm like, are these the same colors? Because they look so different on the website. But now that I have looked at the website again, I know that they look way darker and all of them look almost like the same red on the website. It's, it was super confusing. So I will look into this again. I might buy this in a better shade for me, but I will say the product pictures are a little confusing and this wasn't the right shade for me, but that's my fault. There's nothing wrong with this uh, formula. There's nothing wrong with this product. I will keep using it. It's again, one of those things that I wasn't wowed about. And I think the main reason is that I don't have as many occasions to wear this one as I do my mattifying primers. And this is the one size secure the glow tacky hydrating primer. There are occasions, I should have used this today. Like I said, my skin is just feeling a little rough after too much tretinoin and I need a little hydration, but a lot of hydrating primers is too slippy and oily on the skin. So for me, someone who's already combo oily, and sometimes do need a little extra moisture, they make my skin super slippy so that all makeup just falls off. 
So this one is perfect for me and I've used it like that and I probably should have used it like that today as well, but it was in these baskets and I forgot about it. When my skin needs some extra glow, but I still in the back of my head have to remind myself that girl, you're still oily combo and you can't do something without the grip. And this isn't super sticky tacky, but it has a little bit of a tack grip to it. And I actually think that this is a really good primer if you want the hydration but you don't want the oiliness on your skin. I think that these are really good quality. These are the things that I tried from Prada Beauty. I have a full video on this. The foundation is the thing that actually blew me away. I think the foundation is amazing. I've been using it so much. This is the quad. I got the quad in number three. And this is a dark shade up here. I was actually surprised is the best word to use. This is for me, buildable, high quality eyeshadows. It almost reminds me a little bit of the, a mix between the Makeup by Mario, very high quality, buildable eyeshadows. Oh my God, my dog is sleeping on the floor and she's so cute. I'm so sorry, I can't focus. Oh, you're so sweet, mommy loves you. <sighs> A mix between those and the Natasha Denona cream to powder. Cause these feel creamy, but they're not a cream shadow. And that like almost creaminess that Makeup by Mario had in his new cool neutrals palette. And it is not BAM pigment, but it is very buildable. And you can build this up to be super intense if you want to. I was actually super impressed. Then we have the lipstick. This is the matte one. I have it in number, I think this is the number one. Yes, B01, it's a cool tone nude. And then I have one of the soft matte lipsticks and this one I have in 177, I think. And it is the sheer orange. I like the matte formula way more than I like the sheer matte formula. But I would say, this is me. This is very good quality. Is it worth the price? If you don't love Prada the way that I love Prada, I love Prada. I think Prada is one of my favorite brands. I don't own a lot from them because it's very expensive, but I love Prada. I love how Mucia is not afraid of like going for color and pattern and boldness and still keeping it classy and high end. And this like just the packaging is beautiful, but it is very expensive. This is not a need. If you're into luxury makeup, if you like Prada, you will not be disappointed by these. The foundation is really amazing. But if you're just looking for something that's great and you don't care about Prada and you don't care about fancy packaging or luxury designers, you, you don't need this. Um, you don't. This is the one that I talked about before and this is the Fantasy Cosmetica Wizard Palette. This is a really nice, almost monochromatic blue palette. We have two like vanilla light yellow shades here that are really, really cute. And I have been using this one a bit and I think I've done two different looks. I don't know if you've seen the different, like the second one yet on my channel, but I've done two different looks on this on YouTube. And there is a holographic shadow here as well. And there's just some really fun shadows. I will say these are very pigmented and very beautiful. They're not the easiest, most blendable blues I've ever worked with in my life. But for me, this color story makes sense. You are able to do things with this. These as a contrasting color on the lid or the inner corner is really beautiful. And you can build from lightest to darkest if you want to, or start with the darkest and blend them out. They just require a smidge more blending, but it is doable. It's not impossible. You don't need to, to be a pro to use it. And I like that there are two lighter shades, two darker shades, two of these yellows, and three very different and interesting shimmers. So I think that they did a really, really good job with this palette. I like the theming. I like the packaging. If you like blue eyeshadows, I don't think you would be disappointed with this one at all. I think it's really, really stunning. Uh, yeah, in the back with the fantasy. It's pretty. I like this brand. I cannot wait to see what they have next. Last one in the basket of things that are like, these are nice, but like you don't, like you don't need it, but these are good if you are looking for the specific product. I talked about this before, I think in my haul. These are the Milk Makeup uh, Cooling Water Jelly Tint. It's that like jelly stick that became so popular. I got this one as a gift from my friend Samantha March. It is a jelly one and it is like, it's jiggly. It is a little jiggly. I have the peach one or the bright peach one that's called spritz here's the thing i prefer this on my lips i prefer this on my lips it does work on the cheeks too it dries down very quickly so if you're going to use it on your cheeks either dot it on and blend immediately 
or take with either your, not your finger, because you're going to get it on your finger, be prepared for that, or on your brush that you're not afraid to stain and put it on your cheeks. It is a nice multifunction stick. It does definitely work like that. I am just saying that unless you are a person that at this point, you just want to try out something new within makeup, you just want to try out the next new cool thing. And you're again, not looking for like, what's the best blush? What's the best lip color? This is fun. It does work. It is a fun, cool new technique. And it is a little fun to drag this out uh, when you're like doing your makeup and being like, oh, I have the new fun thing to try. It is experimental. It is, a, is it innovative? I don't know, but it's like something fun. It's nice sometimes to be part of what's hyping and what's going on in the beauty community. But if you're looking to just get that one blush, I would not recommend this one. But if you have a lot of makeup and you're wondering, does it even work? It does. It definitely does work. It is not going to be my end all be all product, but it's a cool one. Okay, now we're getting into the pile of stuff where I'm like, these are really nice. And if you're looking for something new, we have some really good contenders here. Again, you heard me talking about the other things as well. Some of those things are really amazing too. It just, it's a little bit more specific on what, like, what you're looking for. This is the Talk to Cheek from The Balm. This one is really good quality. I did a reel using this one. I, I like this one a lot. I've been using this one a lot. And this has been one of those products where I had to tell myself, okay, you need to do something else. It's really, really, really beautiful. The only thing that I don't like about this is that it only comes in one shimmery color and it's this one. It has a little bit of a golden gleam to it. It's like a bright peach with a golden gleam. All the other colors are non-shimmery. And this doesn't like show up super shimmery on the cheeks either. I just wish they had like one or two more shades that were shimmery because I would have picked that up. So minor complaint. This one, I really love the quality of and I really love the idea of. It is just that I wish that... <laughs> Natasha Denona and Charlotte Tilbury, they do be loving their cool tone pinks. <laughs> And this is another one of those like more cool tone pinks. I love that it goes from deeper to lighter to shimmer. You can go all matte if you want to. You can go all shimmer. If you just put your highlighter brush in this one, it is a straight up highlighter. So it's a very versatile thing. And the formula like this one is really pigmented. So if you blend into that one and get in your cheeks, it's a pretty pigmented blush. I love the format of this one. I just really like, please, there has to be something else than pink. Re I some some something else than pink please <laughs> i'm gonna mention the entire i have the lippies here and i have the palettes the entire new collection between oda's eye and the new like legendary diversa collection that they had three new palettes and some lippies i did do some swatches and like some looks with these i do have a video i will link that down below i really like per usual the quality of Oda's eye. I think the lippies are really pretty. I wish there were some more of the matte liquid lipsticks because I like that formula so much and there's only one new shade and I do think that some of the shades are pretty similar to each other and I kind of wish that they would have been a little bit more different from each other even though I do realize that every collaborator should be able to go for the shade that they are looking for. When it comes to the palettes, I think they are really nice. Some of the color stories are maybe not exactly what I like reach for when I want to do like a look. Some of them, like the, the red and the orange here are super beautiful together. That lonesome mid purple there, I have not used that since I've swatched the palette. It's just doesn't like fit in anywhere what I would like to use. Uh, same here, that, that purple there. I used that in the look. I haven't reached for it since. I think some of these colors are really beautiful, but again, it's not the color stories, and I didn't do it, so it makes sense. It's not my perfect color stories. This one is actually my favorite, and it's because it's a pastel palette, and I think Odesign makes amazing, amazing pastels, and this one I have been reaching for as like a companion palette. So I think that per usual, like Odesign is a quality that I get along with very well. I like their formulas a lot. I, I think the, like, the shimmers are really easy to pick up with a brush. I just, I like their formulas and the pastels are so pigmented that I can use them as an inner corner highlight or as a lid color. So I've really been enjoying these as companions, not necessarily like on their own, but like, it's not like they made the palettes color stories for me either. I think it's very important when you make collabs to do something that's very representing of like where you are right now, what you like to, to wear. 
I have the Ravi Beauty Lippies here. I was able to try these. I got them in December when I was in Las Vegas. I have been trying these out. I did do a lip swatching video of these. I like the slim, I love slim lipsticks. I think there's something so sophisticated with it. It just makes me feel like I am like in a different tax bracket. I like the colors that are chosen, but there's only three colors. Again, it's very expensive to produce makeup. So I'm not surprised that there are only three uh, colors. But I will say this like pink shade is not something that I personally will reach for. My favorite is the one that's called Lily, which is the brown one. I think that that's my favorite. And then there is Dahlia that's a lighter pink. I think that's the one I showed you before. And those are not that different. They're two light nudie shades and one like more brighter mid-ranged pink. So I think that the color like selection is not perfect for me, but I really like the formula of these. And I think the slim packaging is just super beautiful. I have the satin lipsticks that I wanted to talk about before. I have them here now. I have all the colors of the Makeup Revolution. What are these actually called? These are the Makeup Revolution. It doesn't say, but it's the satin lipsticks that they did. These are so pretty. I did a lip swatching video of these. This is like a very thin, but still opaque and satin like shiny lipstick that looks beautiful on the lips and there's so many good colors. This is Divine Brown which is the one that I've been wearing the most after the lip swatching video. I wore this one. I went to a 20s party and I actually wore this one. Then I have really been enjoying this one. I just think that they did a really good job with this. It's a, an affordable lipstick. It is in a pretty nice, like this is a substantial nice packaging. There is a click to it. There is a really like nice amount of product. There's a lot of shades. I think that this was a good product from Makeup Revolution at an affordable price. One of the things that I've really loved in the Glam Light and Beppy, Be Beppy Boop, Beppy Boop, Beppy Boop collection is the lipstick they came out with. They always sell their lip products in lip sets. I personally don't love that, but I know a lot of customers do. But this lipstick formula, this is in the red, beautiful. It just looks, it almost like smooths your lips out while still being a matte lipstick love this formula. I really hope we get to see more things in this formula in the, in the future. Really nice formula, very opaque, very comfortable. It was long lasting. I loved, loved wearing this one and I have loved wearing it after since. This formulation, smash hit. I want to see it in more things. I've really been enjoying this Danessa Myrick's Jummy Skin Water Powder Serum. You press on the bottom and it comes out a drop from top here and you use it as a water serum on your face. This one, I can wear this as an extra barrier, as an extra help in my T-zone just to probably should have used, I should have used that hydrating primer all over my face and I should have used this one just in my T-zone to block out some oils. I think this one really works. This is not an all over primer for me. I've been using it together with other primers. I've been using it on its own. And I think this one for me works better as like a compliment, like an extra help with like my oily T-zone. But I do think it's really cool and I love the formulation of it and how easy it goes on and how it doesn't disrupt anything that goes on on top. Remember when I talked about that eyeshadow palette that I have on my eyes from Glaminatrix? When they released that one that I'm still reviewing, they also released these blushes. These are liquid blushes and they are so nice. I have been loving these. I wore this one the other day. It's in Sunny. Let me see if I can pull some of these away. It is like a bright, bright peach. So pretty. These are beautiful. I dot on two dots and then I blend it out with a sponge or with a brush, not this one, but you can use this one too. I like to use my uh, F07 to blend these out. The packaging is really cute. It comes like you saw in five different colors. It is buildable, but it's easy to blend out. It does not lift what's underneath. Again, it leaves a dewy, nice finish. It's almost like it feels hydrating. It's not sticky. Your hair won't stick to it, but it looks dewy. It's super pretty. I have been going on and on about this one to my friends saying, if you're looking for a new blush, this might be it. I hope she comes out with this in a highlighter formula. I hope she comes out with this in a shimmery blush formula. These are beautiful. These are a smash hit. And I'm so excited for the brand that they're releasing like something else than eyeshadows and it's this good. 
I've been using this concealer a lot and I really, really like it. This is the Laura Mercier. It's the perfecting, real flawless perfecting concealer. This is the concealer that goes with that foundation that got really, really popular with Glamzilla. That is a great foundation, by the way. I got this one and this is going to be my only complaint. I got this one in 3N1, which is a neutral shade, but I will say it's pretty peachy. <laughs> For being described as a neutral, it's pretty peachy and it definitely shows up peachy on my skin. I can tell you that right now, but this one is a serum concealer. It is, I know the Natasha Denona is also described as a serum concealer. This is more liquidy. It is very easy to blend out. I only use a little. I would say that this is a medium coverage, but this one is not very crease prone. If you use a little and you set it with a little powder, it does not crease on me. It looks very fresh under my eyes for the entire day. The only complaint is that the neutral is leaning very peach, according to me. It's a small complaint. I, I still use it a lot. This is just going to be a quick mention, but I recently discovered how beautiful the iconic London Fuller Pout Lip Pencils are. This one I bought out of a recommendation from Risa Does Makeup. She mentioned this in her yearly favorites and she was not wrong. This one, I bought it... Where did I buy it? I will link it down below where I got it, but it was not available at Sephora and Ulta, so I had to go like digging for this on the intro web, but it is a beautiful formulation. This is in Material Girl. It is like a warm beige. It is not peach. It is still a brown. It's just a little warmer without being orange. It's actually really, really pretty. I wish that they had more colors in this that were a little lighter. I actually might go and see if I can find some people swatching this and see if there's another color because I really like this formulation. There is a little sponge tip if you want to blend it out. It honestly looks really pretty all over your lips. I've been very, very impressed with this one. I think it is a great formulation and Iconic London just has so many good products. It's one of those sleeper brands where it's just, they have so many nice things and this definitely is a winner. Speaking of really, really nice things from a brand that I don't try a lot from, this highlighter from Too Faced, this is not new. This came out last year. This is the Moon Crush highlighter. I got it in Shooting Star. It comes in a lighter one and a darker one. This is the lighter one and it is a very good shade for me. It is so smooth and creamy without being cream and it just goes over your skin so beautifully and it has a transparent base and it just looks wet on your skin. It is such a good formulation. It was a long time since I felt something that was this smooth. No sparkle particles, no glitter, no visible. Like it's just stunning. I bought this out of recommendation from several friends and they were not lying. This is beautiful. This, I would like even more shades. This one in a peach, I would love it. Stunning. Stunning formulations. Love it. I really like this new palette by Ensley Rain. I really like the Ensley Rain formula. They have an incredible matte formula and an incredible like different kinds of shimmer formulas. Multichromes, holochromes, toppers, metallics, duochromes, all the shebang. And this groovy garden palette is the second most favorite palette from the brand. I still love that. I think it's like Enchanted Castle, Lance. Mystic Unicorns Pastels. It was beautiful. Absolutely love that palette. This is my second favorite from the brand. And here they're doing something that they also did in that palette. They have some really light shades. This one is also really light. And they have some really dark shades and they have different kind of variations. And all of these mattes make sense in this palette. And all of the shimmers are actually very different from each other. I feel like this palette is just very versatile. This topper shade with that like green mint, I did another look, I don't know if that's live yet, it's probably live, where I used this one together with that Wizard palette from Fantasy Cosmetica. I love the look. I did blue and then I used the green and I used this one here, the topper. Oh, it was so pretty. This is just a good quality palette. Whoever formulated this, stunning. It is a beautiful, high quality, luxurious feeling formula and I'm very impressed with the color selections in here and how it all works together. I think they did great with this palette. When I got that PR package from ABH, they sent me the entire range of the lip velvets. I can't believe I slept on these. This is my new favorite lip formula that's been released this year. These are so 
good. Like they are so incredibly high quality comfort. Okay. Sometimes when, you know, brands describe something as a comfort mat, it just means that they're going to be like this. There's going to be a little sheen to it. Comfort mat just means that they're not fully matte. These are dead on matte, but they don't dry down completely. They have that silicone feeling, but they also don't bleed all over your face. They just like, you can go like this and they just look beautiful. They're not patchy. They're beautiful. They're comfortable. They're matte. They're stunning. Absolutely in love with this formula. I'm so grateful that they sent these to me because I think I wouldn't have tried them otherwise. I really think that I would have slept on this formula. My absolute favorite color is this one, of course. It's the peach amber. It is stunning. I also really love, I think it's this one. The one that is, yeah, the peachy nude. It's like a, like a light beige. Please make this a hit so they can come up with more colors. Because these are so good. There's only six colors and they're, most of them is like a pinky nude. But like, I heard mixed reviews on these but i think this formula is great and the number one thing is probably going to be the makeup item that i have bought this year and used the most since i bought it on youtube outside of youtube definitely one of those products it might be like a concealer actually like a concealer or a powder or foundation that i use the most but let's just say this is by far the color cosmetics thing that i have bought this year that i've used the most where i had to convince myself you cannot use this one again you have other things to review bitch like get your life together this is the natasha nona berry pop cheek trio i love this one there is a dip in mine here, stunning. This one especially as a blush, I use this one too when I wanna get a little darker, but these ones together, they are beautiful and they are worth this trio for me, especially to have the option to use this one if I want to. This is so good. So this one is like a cream that pretty much like dries down matte. You can use this with a brush, honestly. You can use it with a brush because it's not like super smeary. It will pick up with a brush or you can use it with like a sponge. This one I use with the, this one that I talked about before, the Cinch F07. This one is tapered all the way around and it is a little bit like rounded, it's like a tulip shape. And I especially made this brush so that it was bristles that would pick up products like these, like more putty or cream products. This one picks this one up beautifully and you can put it on your cheeks. This one, I can use this one with all three of these formulas if I want to. The highlighter is that like super, what did they call it? It is the Dream Glow Powder, a cream blush, a tinted glow cream base, but I can use this one as a blush and then go in with the highlighter on top. So it is a powder, a balm, and a cream blush. I love this one. I've used it so much. And who would have thought that a berry red, a warm peach, and this beautiful, this is not an icy highlighter and it has a transparent base, so this one will stretch over quite a lot of different skin tones. Who would have thought that I would have gotten so much use out of this one? I bought this one myself. I am so happy I did. I love it. And now I'm thinking like, can I use this tomorrow maybe? Now that I'm like done reviewing some stuff. I absolutely love it and it deserves to be number one. So that was my ranking. Those were the things that I have been loving and not so much loving since like honestly the beginning of the year. Please let me know, do you agree with me on some of these things or are some of my favorites maybe undiscovered things for you? Maybe you are dying now to go to Sephora and swatch some of these. I think both of these are available at Sephora and they're having their sale soon, right? So good. <laughs> I'm just so excited about finding all of these good pieces. If you're interested in seeing any of the things that I'm talking about, or if you're interested in picking anything up, I will leave some links down in the description box with all the info about all the things that I've been talking about. And if you do shop through my links, thank you so much for supporting my channel. It really, really does help out. And I hope you're having a great day and I will see you soon again. The algorithm has been showing you some video here next to me that they think is going to be perfect for you. But if you have to go, you have to go. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.